and I would have voted for Gary Johnson in this last election, but Bill Weld endorsed Hillary Clinton at the last minute. And I thought, what a, I, I don't know, you know, what a dick move. Uh, and so for that, out of spite, I voted for Trump. And since then, Libertarian uh, delegates, write that down. Yeah. My name's Jeremy Oliver. I'm uh, here today for Freedom Fest. I'm from San Diego. And you are particularly well decked out. Do we have this whole shirt in the shot here? Keep calm and QAnon and the Q hat. And I don't even know what this is. You want to turn, turn, turn like that? What, what, what is that? I'm sorry to, to, to try, like, turn your head into the camera there. But hashtag WWG1WGA. You haven't heard of that yet? Man, got to be the last person though. <laughs> <laughs> Where we go, when we go all. That's uh, kind of the hashtag that you could find a lot of information about QAnon and people that, that follow it. Of course, um, you know, like anything, every, everything that you find isn't going to be accurate. So um, it takes a little bit, bit of discernment and uh, time really researching and seeing what, what's come from. Okay, so for people who don't know, what is QAnon and why is it important to you? Um, what is QAnon? It, it's uh, basically uh, a government psyop. Um, that is meant to discer uh, disseminate information uh, in a way that uh, alerts the public through kind of back channels to subvert mainstream media who's not going to tell us that uh, the elite in our society is run by pedophiles and, and thieves. So um, the QAnon theory is one that there was a coup against our elected, uh, against this election to make sure that Hillary Clinton won. And in response, uh, people within our government initiated a counter coup d'etat and uh, this was unlike any other in history not done by guns and, and warfare but, but done on the internet and uh, and so uh, the the theory goes that uh, President Trump is aware of this he, he knows he's been involved with the elites for a long time so he knows uh, what's been going on and uh, people within our government have teamed up with him to ensure that people will be eliminated the swamp will be drained thus the layer of protection that's been keeping these people safe and uh, and able to do these horrible things uh, will be removed and then they could be prosecuted and we're seeing that in for instance the prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein who has been prosecuted many times with no success because of that layer of protection right I was actually about to ask you and I'm still a good follow up then what is the significance of the Epstein case and and what, what aside from one guy going down because I think I think based on what you're saying it's not about Epstein himself it's it's about the network and the actual political power players and power brokers who are kind of behind that and associated with who might be taken down by that so what do you think is the significance and why are you hopeful about well, the Epstein case well people are talking about Epstein but even going back before that we've got Nexium that came out and these are all these major networks of child traffickers human traffickers and and pedophiles and so um, you know, they're, and they're all connected in, in every way they're connected. And you could throw the Church of Scientology in there with them and put them all in a blender and hit frappe. They're all the same club. They're all just moving people around the country. Uh, China's involved, Mexico's involved. Um, look at Cisco, not Costco, but I'm sorry, Costco, a uh, company out of Long Beach, a shipping company that, that Trump just recently made divest of their shares in our port of Long Beach. and. Uh, and he shut down a hu huge human trafficking uh, operation in that move alone, and no one is going to talk about it. Okay, so there's a bit of a sort of trick setup to this interview. Jeremy's actually someone who is familiar with my work and 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 and, and recognized me here at Freedom Fest. So great. There, there, there are a lot of people who do that, and, and, and you never know where they're coming from. So I got to ask, you know, do you describe yourself as, as a voluntarist? Or, or what, what is your, if not, what is your philosophical I mean, worldview grounding? I, I've read your book. You sent me your book a while back. Um, and I, so actually you sent me the online version of it. And so I, I, I listened to that. I don't prescribe to all uh, of that. I don't pres prescribe specifically to open borders. Uh, well, I'm not for open borders. I'm for, for private property borders. Okay. Government borders are illegitimate borders. Private property borders can be as open and closed as the, the owners want them to be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an important distinction right. uh, because it's, it's not saying you, because when you say open borders, a lot of people associate that with, well, you want me to 
have to associate with whoever is happens to be around or by government you know false incentives is, is, is now in my neighborhood and we're not saying that it's it's that the government border itself is illegitimate yeah I, I'm more prescribed to the uh, beliefs of Ron Paul the true okay. the true Ron Paul kind of well Ron Paul Ron Paul actually came out and it, it uh, Anarchapoco last year and said that the ultimate goal is to get government down to zero. And he's, well, he's also, and in my interview with him, described me as a voluntarist. Right. But you're saying but you're, in, in the way that he was a constitutionalist. Own, yeah, exactly. It, it, the, the platform that he ran on as a presidential candidate, you're that kind of libertarian Republican constitutionalist. I went, I went to the Republican Party with Ron Paul, not to be a Republican, but to change the Republican Party and, and bring them to the Libertarian Party. All right, so, so we have a slight distinction here in, in, in our worldviews. And so, Jeremy, I want, I want to kind of... I followed you and I, I supported you and I, I uh, like, in your run, uh, you know, because I, I always backed the, the Libertarian voice. Uh, and you're I, smart enough and open-minded enough to see the allies in the, in the sector who are pulling towards freedom. Absolutely. When it came down to a Republican and a Democrat, I voted Libertarian. It, up until the point, uh, I, and I would have voted for Gary Johnson in this last election, but Bill Weld endorsed Hillary Clinton at the last minute. And I thought, what a, <laughs> I, I don't know, you know what a dick move. Uh, and so for that, out of spite, I voted for Trump. And since then, Libertarian I delegates, write that down. Have... Uh, yeah, I, I tell you what, I voted for Trump and I haven't uh, been disappointed with that. I, I was nervous about that vote. Yeah. It wasn't going to be Hillary, obviously. No, so so that, that's a perfect setup for the, this last big question that I want to ask you relating to QAnon and Trump and these, these other dynamics. Because I've taken a, a sort of general position as an attitude towards this, like, if Trump really is doing something meaningful, changing the system that is taking down pedophiles, that is staying for justice, I'm for that. That's great. And I, I in and of itself, obviously wholeheartedly support that and I have no qualm saying take out everybody in the establishment attached to this even even close to it right, right. I see a big part of that though is be closing our borders because that's where it's coming through I mean I, I know traffickers I know oh, people hold on but if you solve the problems if you solve the problems of the child trafficking and the, and the, the prostitution in, 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 in secret and all the things if, if, you, if you legalize it if you bring it all out in the open and you allow for the free flow of, of human capital separately like that problem mostly goes away and is solved but but I don't want to get into yeah. debating that because we're, we're, we're just acknowledging that that's, that's a distinction in, in our worldview. That's fine. Sure. But what I was getting at is that, you know, I, well, with, with even the, the other good stuff that y you could give Trump credit for, like mm -hmm. challenging America's relationship with the media, I love that. But in that sense, it's really people like Alex Jones and Cenk Uger who deserve the credit for that. And he's kind of, and, and me a little bit, he's kind of riding that wave, right? Yeah, but everybody who's built up the concept of independent media yeah. in America over the I last give two Andrew decades. For yeah, Breitbart things, right? That's, absolutely. That's where we, a lot of Breitbart was a huge force friends, in that. That's where we came from. So, similarly, anything that, good, that comes out of Trump doesn't change the fact to me that he's a statist, that he's still saying, I want to be the central planner. I want to be the kinder general or tyrant. Right. And if, it, again, if he's working with what he's got, though, at the same time, because I, I think I see Trump as more libertarian principles than anybody else out there. Who's, I mean, who's advocated who's, for socialized medicine, who's, who's advocated for taking away with, bump stocks. Shook hands with little Kim. And, and, you know, he's, he's out there. He's, he's I, I, I like this. So like, he's yeah. gotten us out of wars. Okay, he's so ended ISIS the right way. We've been saying, we've been telling him, what you got to do to end ISIS, right? And it continued to go the opposite well, no, direction. Thank you he for pointing in. that out because it, the, the, the foreign policy, you know, for me as an, as an anti-war veteran, war is the health of the state, the violent crimes of war, the worst evil that government's capable of with, and that is huge for me. I don't know if Donald Trump is more of a force pulling that or if he's responsive to that, if he's just riding the wave, like that you could be the Republican in 2016 saying the war in Iraq was bullshit in the primary and get elected. He didn't make that possible. He recognized it and he did it. And similarly, it's harder for the military industrial complex to lie to us and make war. And yet under Trump, military spending, federal government spending, everything, everything, all these fundamental dynamics about government, Keep going up. It's Keep harder, getting worse. It's harder to sell weapons if, if Lil Kim is in a, a danger in the in the region, though. They've managed to sell plenty of weapons and manufacture. Are we still uh, dropping as many bombs a day? Of course not. It's, yeah. it's been it's down well, historically they're, they're overall. But he, on that one. So there's the lack of. So anyway, again, we get. Yeah. So so my point is that I look at those bigger issues. And what, what I want to put my effort towards as an activist, and this is where, I, Jeremy, I'm really respecting Jeremy here as an activist, 
You're someone who's motivated by a deep-seated sense of injustice. You want to do something about it. And I, and I want to give you the chance to, to really answer this with a meaningful why for you, because what I have chosen to do is say, I'm not going to get involved with the Trump drama, the political theater, because he sucks up so much attention. And it's to bullshit mostly, and, and you, you understand what I mean, even, even for the legitimate stuff, a lot of what Trump does is just give me attention, let's just distract people, and let's, let's make politics this conflict on Twitter. And that's, that's fine, and I don't hold and as that. as people say they hate it, the day that he leaves Twitter and goes to any other platform, <laughs> right. it's over for Twitter. And that other platform goes through the roof. Possibly, right? yeah. Well, Incredible. hopefully it'll be they something they blockchain it, they and decentralized. Watching and commenting yes, exactly. on every single. Well, thing. I don't. They hire and people to, to get in his feed just to respond to it, like they do with you. And, and I mean, that's, that's so. I don't though. Like I deliberately yeah, ignore right. this. And to me, I, as I, I'm, in, I'm enticed. I'm intrigued by what people like you say is, is the potential of coming out of QAnon. And I'll give a quiet shout out to my friend whose initials are BF in San Diego about this and he'll know who I'm talking about. But I would rather focus on the big picture. I would rather focus on waking people up rather than sort of rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, even if it's a better configuration, even if it means, you know, you know and, and again, I'm not against fighting pedophiles. I'm really excited about this possibility that we see of a significant shift coming through the Epstein case and everything else that, that a lot of people I think want to give Trump a little too much credit for. I'd rather focus on the long term, waking people up, taking advantage of this as a teachable moment. And r because w when you say Trump is the one who's doing this, it's sort of re-entrenching, reinforcing statism, right? So why, what is the appeal? Why do you make the choice to take your effort as an activist and come here investing in QAnon specifically? Well, first of all, Q, the QAnon is, is a group of people. Uh, it's, there is a, a, an element that is Trump, and when it's signed off Q+, that is specifically Trump, is what we believe. Um, but the Trump himself, Trump himself, and, and the wording matches tweets, and the timing that they're released are, are used as proofs because they're dropped at the same time as his regular tweets with using the same words, and and so um, yeah, I mean it's there's some pretty intricate things, but in that it's a group of people, and we're to believe that a majority of them are, are military, like six of them are from military out of out of say ten. Um, are you're familiar? I'm, I know with Dr. Steve Pachinik. No. Okay, so. Uh, definitely, I would recommend looking up Dr. Steve Pachinik. He worked as a hostage negotiator uh, for our government for many, many administrations. He, uh, you know, the he uh, was involved with the assassination of Aldemaro. So, you know, unstabling governments was kind of his thing, and and then talking down CIA as a shrink was. He was also the the voice behind Michael Crichton's books. Um, so, uh, he announced on YouTube eight days before the election, 2016, November 1st, he said, you know, a group of us in the, in the armed forces and military have uh, teamed up with Trump, and we're going to make sure that this election goes as, as planned and it's, it's not hijacked, and, uh, and just kind of everything that spells out Q. So that's someone that you would, I would recommend you check out. Um, also, QAnon.pub, um, or I'm sorry, QMap.pub. Pubs, uh, QMAP.pub uh, is the list of all the verified communications, and it's just one of those things that you could go in there and read for yourself. And there's a lot of information, a lot of foretelling of the things. At this point, it, the foretelling's gone, and now it's like it's a lot of bragging. It's like you see, here it's all coming to, to pass. So all right, Jeremy. Cool stuff. Thank you for your work and thank you for your time, your thoughtful answers here. I'm going to give you one last question of the day to respond to here. Would America be better off without the federal government, and why or why not? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm big on limited government, um, but I believe a limited federal government is, is probably important, too. Well, how do you limit it geographically? How big should it be geographically? Because well, that's what we're talking about. You know, if you say you want a constitutional government, you can still have it at the state level. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's an interesting question, honestly. Uh, it's not something I thought about all day today, and like I have been like this, <laughs> you know, I'm good. not like, yeah, I'm not focused on it. Um, but I think um, it's a question but, but a lot more Americans should consider. Yeah, it, and absolutely, I'll agree with you on that. Um, there, because we are all are calling for a limited government. So the question is, how limited? And 
man, I, Ron Paul saying uh, it should be zero, I, you know, you gotta agree. With well, I think that. what Ron Paul that's, and I would—that's a dream, that's a utopia, and I'm I'm all for it. But well, I, th I think what we would agree we on, get. as as people who believe in the voluntarist ethic ideal, is to say you can have as much government as you want as long as it's voluntary. In which case, it wouldn't really be government, maybe by our definition today. But that if we get government localized, you're way more likely to get that. But Jeremy, I appreciate your time. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Any else? Anything else you want to say as a last word or something to plug? No, I just, uh, I mean, you asked me earlier what, what got me into activism, and uh, it was just looking at the TV and being tired of yelling at it and not doing anything about it, looking at your videos, looking at other people's videos, uh, and, uh, you know, Ben Swan, and, and uh, uh, who's your buddy that you'd ride, run around with uh, at the Bilderberg? Uh, uh, Luke Rudowski Luke, back yeah. in the day with Adam versus yeah. the man on RT. Yeah, that was some good stuff. And so, I have more of a Russian connection than Donald Trump. I don't know why people what, aren't like, like invested. Like really, I thought I thought that would be like my edge in the, the in this election that I get the attention of all all the, all the Trumpkins like yourself to be like, wait, Kokesh is the one with the real Russian connection. He worked for RT, but no, no, but I'd rather ignore a message that's really challenging things. Absolutely, <laughs> no, um, I I. You know, I just encourage people to get off their couch and and do something, even on a local level, even if it's just going and registering your neighbors to vote and and you know, talking politics and religion when when it's uncomfortable is what needs to be done because uh, t keeping limiting discussion is is just been festering the problem. So we're at the point where people need to get out and, and engage discussion. Awesome. awesome. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Beautiful. Likewise. Adam. Oh, so you watch my videos, now you get to be in one. <laughs> Adam vs. The Man is made possible with support from SmartCash. Check out smartcash.cc to find out more about this powerful, business-focused cryptocurrency that is fast, easy to use, and community-centric. SmartCash is designed to be securely used for day-to-day -day transactions and put the currency back in cryptocurrency.